he's an offensive analyst down at LSU now. Don't know exactly what they're going to have him doing. But going to Ohio in my head, Tyler Tettleton, I thought, if somebody would have given him an opportunity at any point to win an NFL job, would be a franchise quarterback. Really? Let me walk this out because I haven't done this yet. No, that's just – okay. Um, Tyler Tuttleton is a two-star quarterback because we don't give you one star. (laughs) You get zero or two at Norman North. And Frank Solich had come down to Norman North to scout the kicker. To scout the kicker. And he saw Tuttleton slinging the ball around. And he brought him to Jimmy Burrow. Joe's dad, defense coordinator, says, what do you think? He said, I, 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 think, I think our defense is going to get beat down a bunch. Why? I was scouting the kicker. You just fell into this kid? Yeah, I fell into this kid. So he goes to Ohio. I think it was his only Division One offer of any kind. And promptly becomes the first quarterback in Ohio history to win 10 games and won them their first bowl game ever. All right. Idaho, Idaho Potato Bowl. Rewrote their record books completely. A little bit in the CFL and then analyst. Holy cow, great. that was like 04, 05? Uh, I want to say 11, what? 13, 14. Yeah, 11, 13, That 14. recent? Yeah. Uh, because I know this because the first time that I actually laid eyes on Tettleton after Norman North because I was stringing games for the Oklahoma and getting through grad school, he was a grad assistant at OU. And I remember this because it was the last pro day – that I have attended. And Doriel Green Beckham was coming out early after just playing on the scout team and didn't want to stay. And, yada, right. yada. and they have a quarterback to throw balls to. So they put Tettleton out there and Tettleton's just uncorking him. And he's having a ball. Like he's got on this skinny kid, got on this long sleeve OU shirt, this hat, running around, just dropping bombs, just slinging it. <laughs> I'm going, what? Did, what? He's like, nah, you, you know, no. He didn't work out at the next level. He's going to be. He never now. took another. He never took another snap after Ohio. He, no, he tried CFL. Oh, did he? Yeah. And then grad grad assistant, and he quality control at, at the Browns last year. Uh, after being a Jets intern, then quality control. Now he's an analyst at LSU. Mm. And if Ed sees what I see, because he's fascinated by Lincoln Riley's offense and whatnot, that's his Joe Brady. Tettleton's going to be a star. Right. He just is. And there, there are times for which I, I wish I had more cause to talk about kids on the other side of the turnpike because there's a few of them that I absolutely love and I think are special. He's one of them. I, I enjoy Tyler Tettleton and his well, story. I was Mickey Tettleton of, is his dad. I was dad. a fan of his dad. Yeah. Um, All-star, four times. I, I, I had no idea that, yeah. that the younger Tettleton played as recently as eight, seven or eight years ago. Yeah. I thought it was 15 years ago. I want to say he's four years, five years younger than me. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, good. I mean, I'd like, I mean, I would love to see uh, him become, you know, a star coordinator and make a half a million dollars or a million dollars and, and represent. And, and for that matter, I mean, there needs to become, we need, we need to see the development of some guys who are, like the heir apparent, or maybe not heir apparent, but but viable guys uh, at Tulsa, at OU, at OSU. I don't know who the next coach is at OSU. I think I do. I do think I do. Ooh, ooh. I think it's Zach Robinson. But is he still at uh, at LA? He's with the Rams. He's still at LA. Mm-hmm. Okay, I love Zach, uh, mm-hmm. and I love his story. But, but I think because I think Mike Gundy's still in it for six or eight more years, which would take Zach right to the right out. For Age forty, okay, and who knows if that's all NFL or if he's mm-hmm. around uh, or back at the college level by then. But no, I mean, if I had to guess today, just roll out a name: Zach Robinson's the next guy to, at OSU. Interesting. Interesting. OU, who knows? No clue. Who knows? Mm-mm. Yeah, people ask me who would I who would I want to see, and I, I hold that one close because when I say something to someone, then it becomes a thing. Right. And that, I'm getting used to that. That's new. Uh, but I would like to see Tellton around the area. And by around the area, I mean anywhere. Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas. I mean, I would Oklahoma. have no problem seeing Brent Venables back at OU. <laughs> Who you telling? 
Well, I'm just saying. You know, I mean, most people would tell you the same thing, but they're also the people that ran him off. Mm-hmm. Like, he didn't leave because they ran him off, but it didn't, it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt him leaving. You know what I mean? Because at the time, people were like, the, the defense is too complex. And I remember we were talking to, golly, it must have been Tom Wart. And Tom Wart was getting mad, I guess, because he would read read the paper or whatever. And he would come in and said, look, I graded out 98 for the last six weeks. 98. Okay? I missed one play. One. So you tell me, is it me or is it the defense? And at the time, you know, you're funneling everything to Jefferson and when Mike comes back because he doesn't trust anybody. And I think they're just in an in-between year. And it was a bad year to have an in-between year, 2011. You go into 2012 and you get your head handed to you because Mike doesn't know what he sees. And he never recovers. Yeah. 2011, OU was uh, preseason number one. <sighs> Insight Bowl. And uh, <sighs> was that the trip to Florida State season? I think it was. They won at Florida at, yeah, at cause, Tuscaloosa. Yeah. Because yeah. Dope no, was. Tuscaloosa. Uh, at, at Tallahassee. At Tallahassee. Yeah, no, I got you. Yeah. They got you too. They got you too. At Doke Campbell. Mm-hmm. Some gun still shakes. That place in uh, uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin Stadium. Camp Randall. Camp Randall. That's where I, was at. I had two unbelievable football seasons as a beat writer in consecutive seasons. 2011 Oklahoma State. Yeah, a lot of that's fun. An that was a fun season. It's an all timer. And then I and then I covered Tulsa football for two years, and that Tulsa team in 2012 won 11 games and a bowl game, and should have, could have, could have actually ran the table, but for for sure should have won, uh, should have beaten Arkansas. Yeah, Arkansas was no good. Yeah, because uh, I look, I wasn't at that game. Uh, I think man, it might have been my senior year then. Because Malzahn was still on, no, Malzahn was still on staff. Because we, oh, went, that game, yeah. Because we went to Arkansas. Because like AJ Whitmore, I believe, kept, they kept running Wildcat on goal line, and we kept going. Because you couldn't get in, mm-hmm. you know. And if you get in one or two times, it's a different game. But uh, I can't wait to get back to Arkansas that, for that game. That was a fun season. Oh wait, yeah. because by mid season, yeah. Um, the three teams combined, T- Tulsa, OU, and OSU were combined, I want to say, 20-1. and one. And the only loss was OU against Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tulsa was unbeaten. OSU mm-hmm. was unbeaten. OSU was 7-0 and going to Texas. Uh, and, and Tulsa was leading the country in offense and was undefeated, I think, until that Arkansas game. And, and Arkansas wasn't very good that year. So I know Graham would like to have that one back. But – um, no, 08 season, one of my all time favorites. Um, 2011, though, was uh, from an Oklahoma State standpoint, the best team I ever covered by two touchdowns. By two touchdowns, the best team I ever covered was the 03 Sooners, hmm. and th- th- that's undeniable. They were the best team I've ever covered, the most hmm. talented team. And on that list of the best teams that did not win a championship, they didn't win any championship. Darren Sproles, please come on down. Man, that was a revelation that night. I mean, I knew he was a good player. Uh, they had lost to Marshall that season. Yeah. Kansas State got beat by Marshall Pot in Stansky September. later said, I cover a lot of great athletes. Darren Sproles, probably the greatest athlete ever covered from the state of Kansas. Mm. And I remember going. Was he a Kansan? I, th- uh, I think so. Really? I think so. I didn't know. I've never so. known where he hailed from. I think so. That's crazy. Yeah. No, he, he him running down that far sideline. Uh, OU drove and scored first, and then got beat thirty-five to seven. As probably a three touchdown favorite. I don't remember the line, but I oh, bet yeah. you they were favored by twenty or more. And it was so cold, and we just thought, get this over with. Let's move on to the championship game or to the Sugar Bowl. Okay. And uh, never dreamed they had a chance of losing the damn thing much less getting blown out of the stadium shocking probably the most shocking football game i've ever covered hmm. or the most shocking outcome bill thanks for doing i'm this. rambling man no don't thanks for doing this no I you're welcome you. no i've enjoyed it yeah. i mean what would i be doing if i had a little time off this this okay okay all right let's just go venture a guess no okay. i mean how many times did al jerkins and i go to dinner after he got off late at night and we do this until they say 
we're closing now. That's a so. No, that's that's a life. Yeah. I got a call from Al this morning. Oh. Right before I saw you. Oh. He says you ha- you have to be here here be in Nashville. He said you got to be here on May twenty to see the stones. Ah. I'm like, so we'll see if we can All make right. that work. Right on. Yeah. Bill Haston, Tulsa World Sports columnist. All right, RJ.